Hi, everybody. My name is DMA, Donna Michelle Anderson, and I am uh, the VP of Development at Planet. Oh my gosh. I'm the VP of Development at BET Networks. Uh, and I am really happy to be here today, especially now that you are able to see me. So I'm just going to make sure I'm looking into the camera and you are hearing me. And we're going to start fresh and say, Hello, and what an amazing day. Hello from sunny California, hopefully, to sunny Jamaica. I am a television executive. Uh, I was a television showrunner, uh, and I uh, have a company that also does technology. So I do a lot of things. And really, the sum of what I would want to say to you today, as you're all getting ready to embark on a next step, just take all the pressure off. You're just going to do the next step. What I would say to you today is to remember, you're not here to do something. You're here to become someone. And the less focus and the less kind of stress that you place on what is it I'm here to do, the more everything's going to open up for you and you can relax into the journey of becoming who you're supposed to be. And that journey, if just life is amazing and the universe opens up all of its doors, never ends. That, that's the joy. The, the, the journey never ends. What you're going to do in the process of becoming that person is going to change. Sometimes from month to month, from year to year, five years from now, it is in fact one of the greatest gifts of education and perspiration and inspiration that you don't do the same thing your entire life. You should keep creating opportunities and opening doors. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is how you're going to do that and how do you do that inside of a, of a real of an examined and an organic personal brand. So I'm going to start with the three P's. I want everyone to think about this. I love the title of this experience from pain to purpose. So I'm going to just talk about three P's. And I really want you to think on these as I write them. As I say them, I want you to write them. Here's what I want you to think about. How do I process pain? That's number one. How do I process my pain? Everyone has it. How do you process it? Number two. How do I process opportunity? When opportunity appears before me, how do I process it? How do I receive it? How do I react to it? And number three, how do I process love? Do I trust it? Do I embrace it? Do I think I deserve it? Do I reject it? Do I question it? How do I process pain? How do I process opportunity? And how do I process love? Everyone got that? Start with the first one. How do I process pain? One of the great beliefs that I hold is virtually every problem that we experience in our lives and in the world is based on people not knowing how to constructively process pain. From bad relationships to war, people's reactions to their pain trigger all the unhappy things in our lives. So I, I'm going to give you an example. If you go to the grocery store and the cashier accidentally doesn't ring something up or doesn't accept a coupon because it's expired. You might come swinging. You might be, ah, oh, this is not my day. I can't believe this. Get the manager. None of that has to do with the grocery store or the cashier or the food or the coupon. And all of that has to do with your pain. If when you felt pain as a young person or even now, you were told to stop crying. You were fed. You were put in front of a television set. If anything that happened when you felt pain said to you, don't feel that, run from that, avoid that, block that, you've got to make a conscious effort 
to get in front of your pain and say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> My name is DNA. What you got for me? I'm not going to drink you away. I'm not going to smoke you away. I'm not going to eat you away. I'm not going to gamble or shop or, or video game you away. I'm just going to take a close look at you, and then I'm going to process you. I'm going to get to the other side of you. And I may be able to do that on my own. I may do that with professional help, with seminar, with counseling, with whatever I can do. A great book. What I'm not going to do is pretend you're not there and then be confused every time you come up and just mess my life up. Unconscious pain, source of all evil. All right, so I want you to think of it this way. Let's say you're standing on the bank of a flowing river, right? Everyone just... Look ahead of you. There's a, there's a river that you are facing, and the bank on the other side has everything you ever wanted. Everything you ever wanted. The love you want, the career and growth and endless possibility that you want, the happiness you want for yourself and your family. It's right there on the other side of this river. If you had never learned to process the pain, then your choice is to keep walking down the riverbank, saying, I'm going to wait for the river to get less narrow, or I'm going to look for some rocks to kind of get over easier. You're just going to keep walking down the riverbank. And what's at the end of the river? An ocean. I'm saying to you, process the pain, jump into the river. It is cold, there are rocks, there are, let's make it disgusting, there's, there's eels and, and there are leeches. But it's the fastest way to anything you ever wanted. And if you keep walking down the river hoping that you can just get to a nicer passage, that stuff may not be on the other side of the bank by the time you get to the end and then come back around. Someone else may have come on and taken all of that because they see it sitting there saying, well, she doesn't want it. I'll take it. So what we want for you is for you to commit, number one, not to getting rid of all pain. Pain is part of life. Not to seeking pain, that's a problem. We want you to commit. I want you to commit to feeling the pain when it comes and finding tools to move away from it, defining you and guiding your choices. So number one on the journey that you are beginning now is the commitment that you will, in a healthy way, face Accept and deal with your pain. Number two, processing opportunity. What happens when the floodgates suddenly open or even a little tiny excellent thing comes into your day? When an opportunity comes in front of you, do you distrust it? Do you challenge it? Do you say, uh-oh, I don't want to jump into this because something could go wrong and I'd rather be miserable where I am than have a taste of awesome and have it all go wrong and be miserable again. No. Processing opportunity is an exact result of how you've dealt with your pain. So if you think you're not worthy, if you think you're dumb, if you think you're frightened, if you think it's not your time, if you think any of the things that pain brings up inside of us, you think any of those things, when opportunity comes, you can't process it. You can't maximize it in the biggest, best way because you haven't dealt with your stuff yet. So if you're, if you're thinking about how I'm going to face my stuff, my pain, I want you to tell a story to yourself about what is the last kind of awesome thing that happened to me. And how did I process that? Did I jump on it? And were there any messages that were kind of keeping me from wholeheartedly investing in that and making it everything that it could be? Third thing, how do you process love? You cannot begin, continue, or end this journey in its best possible way without love. Not just the love that comes towards you from other people, from the men and the women that you love, from the children that you love, but the love that you want to give yourself. How do you process love? Do you wake every day and offer it? Do you look for it and rejoice when you see it? 
Do you redefine it when it's coming at you? Because it's probably not something that it's pretending to be. You know who you are. How do you process love? Write that down. Just think about it. Because how you process love, guess what that goes back to? It goes back to your pain. It goes back to your pain. Whatever is inside of you that is unresolved is going to leap up and answer the love that comes your way. And in our journeys to actualize, to actualize ourselves professionally, we don't just need money. We don't just need investors. We don't just need friends and staff. We don't just need customers. We really need love because the amount of of stuff you're going to put into the universe, the time, the effort, the risk, the daring, the challenges, the constant, constant, constant push to establish yourself and grow and become is really draining. And if you're putting all of that out there, you've got to be getting something back. So make sure that you have found a way to process and receive love. Guess what? The way that you receive love is connected to if you've dealt with your pain. And the way that you receive opportunity is also connected to and, and directed by how you dealt with your pain. That's why I love the title of this experience, From Pain to Purpose. But I want to frame it in a very specific way. You're not here to transition from being in a place of pain to being in a place of purpose. Pain's okay. Pain is fine if you know how to deal with it. Here's the great news. Here's the branding news. Your pain is your purpose. Your pain is your purpose. All of that hurt and vulnerability and doubt that you are trying to pretend you don't have or you're questioning or you're ignoring or you're putting into the pretty box and putting in the corner is where your dreams lie. Because the truth is, as you try to figure out, all right, my journey is not something I'm supposed to do. It's someone I'm supposed to become. It is me and my place in the world, the energy and the emotion in the experience I'm putting out there, the thing that you are most likely to do limitlessly for others is that which you want most for yourself. The thing that you so deeply want for yourself, that void, that gap, that emotion, tap into it. That's what you're going to be doing on the journey. And you can do that in every career. You can do that working for someone else. You can do that working at home and taking care of the family. You can do that working for yourself. Let work go and be you. I love the expression, do you? I'm going to get us started to just say, be you. What do you want? Why not the world give it to you? On the inside, what do you want? That longing, that gap, that pain, is your purpose. So how does that translate into your brand experience? Well, let's talk about what a brand really is. A brand is the emotional transformation that a product, a service, a person consistently delivers to their audience. A brand is a before and after machine. A brand is actually not an image. We're going to get to image. If you wear a little flower and you lapel your hair every day, that's not your brand. It could be part of your image. A brand is an entirely internal experience. So we know that Coca-Cola isn't out there saying, hey, we're selling caramel colored carbonated sweetened water with high fructose corn syrup. That's not what they sell. They're like, are you feeling kind of on the outside and alone and, and sad? Have a coconut smile. Be happy. Drink happy. 
They are selling membership to the happy club. When you are thinking of your personal brand, think about who you are that go-to person for. Who is constantly reaching out to you? And no matter what the external ask is, money, time, etc., they come to you for a reason, and there's an emotional connection to it. You've got to talk to the people who lean on you and make consistent, repeated requests of you and find out what is that emotional state you're in with that group. Got to break the glass, got to call my girl. And when you figure out what that emotional state is, for a bunch of people, you're going to start getting a consistent message back. And you're going to say, I'm so sick of this. I don't want to be about this. And I'm going to say, stop. That's your brand. That's your brand. That is organic. That is you. Perception is everything. If that's what the world believes they get from you, and they value it enough to keep coming running to you for it, I want you to love it, embrace it, and start building it into your daily script. So you can control and you can maximize how that works in your life, how that works for your job. So your brand is a before and an after. If I think of any celebrities who have lasted for a long time, a Madonna, a Jay-Z, a Mary J. I could put a circumstance out there and say which of these three celebrities would you turn to? I don't care if it's their music, a movie, a book, their website, because brands are emotional experiences, so they transcend all platforms and all delivery. You just want a piece of that. You just want to be in the Oprah experience when you need Oprah's particular brand thing. So for you, the message I hope that you're hearing from that is stop looking outside of yourself for what it is you're supposed to do. And even if you've already decided, this is what I'm going to do, I want you to add that one little word. This is what I'm going to do next. But first, before the business plan, the website, trying to get those customers, putting my marketing plan together, I'm going to stop, look inside of myself, and say, what is the emotional experience I am offering my customers? What emotional state are they in before they interact with whatever, with whatever I'm selling or doing? And what is the emotional state they are in after? Then, when you're looking at social media, when you're looking at uh, the, any of your choices for what should my Facebook experience be, what should my Twitter experience be, how about YouTube channels, what about my website, they're not this constant celebration of self. Come see me do this, this just opened, buy this from me. I always saw people remember social media has me and I in it because people use it exclusively for themselves. So you're going to reposition how you create your digital and social experience so that it is an opportunity to give that emotional shift your audience so wants for themselves. Use social media to uplift and redirect and celebrate your clients, not yourself. And know that they are already connected to you through your emotions, through your pain, through your longing, through your celebration. Whatever you share of yourself is what your audience most connects to you through. And I will say that because I came from a very different time in our country, in the U.S. I was a, I was a girl. I was into math and science. They didn't want to let you in the computer classes. If you if you got the best grades in, in, in the school, they don't give math awards to girls. It was a kind of an ongoing theme in my life. 
And I went on to college at a very young age. And while I wanted to major in math, ended up doing something a little more towards my outgoing, fuzzy personality side. But you know what kept happening? <laughs> every job I had, everything I did, I was designing something, I taught myself to code, I would build out little, little applications to make the job easier. I think you get where I'm going. And when I became a television producer, then a showrunner, got a, my own production company, Soul Show, and I was going nuts trying to figure out how do I resolve, you know, this financials issue. I couldn't find the software to do it. And I sat down one afternoon and wrote up specs for what I wish the software would do. And, and then I realized it was time to leave television. I started a software company. And I spent seven years, and literally all of my money, because this was during the crash, um, building a company, building out two software solutions, um, bringing in customers, and trying to solve the problems they had that I had had. Uh, and you know what? Seven years later, uh, happily, uh, I, am, I am working, I have customers, I have you know, two sets of incredible software, and this year I, I, I won two patents. Uh, two patents from the United States uh, PTO, and uh, I am one of the 5.5% of all patents, commercialized patents, that have been given to women in the history of this country. And, and I say that because, one, I'm so proud. <laughs> and two, because I do this, I love doing this with women because, oh my gosh, what if someone had done this with that little egghead girl I was who just wanted to do math and science. So know that I am here for you. In a way, I'm also here for me at 8, me at 13, me at 15, and, and that's inside of you too. As you are developing your brand, look only on the inside. Your image, how it looks, will be a reflection of that internal discovery and the journey you go through life with many careers, many companies, many opportunities will always be connected to the growth inside of you, to turning that pain into a purpose and finding a way with that purpose to erase that pain around the world. So I really thank you for the opportunity to speak to you and if there are questions, um, Elvira Harriet, um, I will stand by. And uh, I hope you have an amazing rest of the day. And I really want to thank the organizers for inviting me to join you. And um, go find your truth. Oh, wonderful. OK, I just got a question. So the question is, how do you get out of your pain to find your purpose? Don't ever separate your pain and your purpose. You can feel the pain. What I want you to do is verbalize it. Start working on how to heal it. But that verbalization, that statement, I am invisible. I am underestimated. I am unloved. I am alone. That will inform your purpose. So when you recognize that pain that you're feeling, your next move is to say, where are other people who are feeling that pain? And how can I help them get past their pain? and get on the business of being who they're supposed to do. So don't try and you know, separate pain and purpose. Identify the pain because that's how you're going to find your audience and that's how you're going to find your purpose. So for instance, if I am saying I cannot, if I'm saying as a young person, wow, I have all of this potential and nobody recognized my potential and shepherded it to fruition, that I would go in my life, in every job I've ever had, in all my personal experiences, in my, my charitable efforts, everything, and say, where are there people doing amazing things who just need a shepherd? You know, the little, the little hook and, the, and, and the, the robes. They just need a shepherd to say, oh, I see you. There you are. Come this way. And I'll take you to where you're trying to go. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. So what you need to do 
is get right in front of your pain, identify it, and accept that it is your purpose. It's not something to avoid. It's something to embrace and to inform the choices you make in your career. Uh, next question is about young girls not getting into technology. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> Obviously a very favorite question of mine. The most wonderful thing that we can do to get young girls into technology is when they're still in elementary school, invest deeply academically in their math skills to be very watchful. Are the teachers calling on them? Are the teachers excited about them? A lot of times, girls become invisible in math and science classes. Have that conversation with the instructors of your children and say, you know, my young girl, she loves math. We, we do it at home. We'll be so excited. Can we do an extra credit project with you? Find a way to get her connected to the teacher who is the bridge to the education so that she can be seen in the class. Separate from education, how do we encourage girls to do the things that create computer scientists and engineers? And when they're playing, when you give them games, I love coloring books, but I also love logic problems. I love flashcards and games that deal with math that you play for fun in the family. Believe it or not, my family did that with, with me, um, and I loved it. And I always thought math was fun because my family made it fun. And, and when they want to try and build things and construct things, don't tell them to put the hammer down. They're going to hurt themselves. <laughs> Pick up the hammer with them. Take them to a class. Let them figure out how things are made. Let that curiosity always be encouraged so that in the face of maybe outside influences not encouraging them, you will be the voice that says, you figure out how that's made. You figure out how that's done. I'll learn with you. And number one thing, don't ever say in front of your child or anyone else's child, oh, I'm stupid at math, I'm bad at math, I just don't get it. Don't give them the out that 20, 30, 40 years from now, they can have given up on something. If you are uncomfortable in math, especially if you didn't have a great math teacher or math teachers in your younger years, please sit with your child and learn with them. Show them that at any age, you can learn, you can grow, and you can embrace even things that you've been taught to be afraid of, like math and science. All right, we might have one more question. Oh, fantastic. All right. The importance of mentors for women, especially in corporate America. Wow. Uh, these are all great questions, but I'm getting a little misty because these are all, um, these are very important things to me. Uh, Ironically, uh, I, most of my mentors in my professional career have been men. Uh, and yet, the one female mentor I have stuck out the most because it was a connection, a bond, and an understanding of me that was so personal. Um, whereas my male mentors really just responded to my skill level, um, which was useful to them and, and wonderful for me and, you know, and helped me along my way um, it, you know, to grow and become a showrunner. Uh, the importance of mentors. I just don't believe that the fastest way to get anywhere is figuring out how to do it yourself. So many people come to me, I do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, one-off professional development meetings and whatnot. So many people come to me um, and say, well, I wanted to be a director. Okay, great. Did you take a class? You know, have you shadowed somebody? Have you done any seminars? No, 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 I've not been shooting for eight or nine years. You know, I just need to learn things myself. Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> Stop. Let that go. <laughs> You have a chance to sit for a day with Steven Spielberg, uh, you know, or, or uh, another great director, or, or you're going to spend eight or nine years and figure out how to become that guy yourself. Uh, guess what? There's no shortcut around knowledge. Knowledge is the shortcut. Mentors have gotten where you're trying to go. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> They are the fastest way from A to B possible. And just take their advice, do what they ask you to do, and watch how it shifts and accelerates you. So mentors are important. But mentors don't, you know, just materialize at events and you walk up and say, I want to be a mentor. Mentors evolve in your life. 
And some will be a very short time and some will be for a very long duration. It's your goal to find in your immediate universe and out in the digital universe and in the broadcast universe people who are speaking your language. I would be most interested in finding people whose pain is your pain. I think you're catching on, but it's all about connecting to longing and desire and voids and gaps in our souls and our hearts because those people, whether you get to meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, whether you read their books, go to a presentation that they do, watch a show that they're on, you will learn from those people the best once you've identified those kindred spirits. They don't have to be other women. Um, it's great if they are. They just have to be people who see you. And once they see you, that's their job, I want you to hear them. That's your job. Don't know everything. Don't try and convince them all that you know. Listen. Appreciate and act on their advice, and you will have given your mentor the greatest gift a mentor can ask for. Uh, checking out to see if that's time for me. All right, I think those are the last of the questions. So let me just say thank you again to everybody. Goodbye to everyone. Have an extraordinary day. Embrace your pain. And when we wrap up, if you even have 30 seconds, turn to the person on your right and just say it aloud my greatest pain is get it out of the silence get it out of the shadows just put it out there and accept that it's just a part of you like your haircut and that really cute blouse you're wearing thank you so much everybody bye bye